Greetings, Game Cola faithful, and welcome to the Game Cola podcast. This is podcast number 54. Uh, with me today are Paul Franz and Michael Gray and Christian Porter. Everyone, introduce yourselves. Hello, everyone. I'm Paul Franz, and I'm Game Cola's chief editor. I am Michael Gray. I write inside the guide, and I make various video walkthroughs for the Game Cola YouTube channel. And I'm Christian Porter, and I just want to love you all night. So today we are here to podcast. Uh, yeah. What topics should we discuss? Uh, does anyone have a topic that they brought? I brought the topic of visual novels because I've played a couple lately, and I'm actually trying out for a writing job on a visual novel. Really? But they haven't gotten back to me. I had my interview on Sunday, Oh. You... and they said they'd get back within a week. They've got a couple of people they're interviewing. So let's talk about visual novels so I actually know what they are, because I don't know much about them. And let's hope they don't listen to this podcast. I was going to ask, like, do you have a visual novel concept that you want uh, to write? But I guess that's kind of a no. It, I mean, they have a thing. Um, I guess, see, I don't know anything about visual novels. What's coming to mind is um, Harvest Moon, or a situation like that where you have, like, six potential girls that you can pursue. No, well, like, get married to. Well, no, uh, I think that's that's close, but uh, you have to get rid of the the gameplay elements. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. that's why it's called a visual novel, is because it's basically you reading text, and every once in a while, it's kind of like a choose your own adventure, like the book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like. And even then, sometimes there's not even that much interaction in it. <laughs> or uh, to to put it in real game call it terms, it's Phoenix Wright without all the investigations and courtrooms. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that came up. I mentioned Phoenix Wright during yeah. my interview. I mentioned um, the Matches and Matrimony, the Pride and Prejudice visual <laughs> novel. But I I mean, they're, they're doing a situation where there are like six different girls and they're hiring a different writer for each girl. Oh, interesting. Oh. Yeah. That sounds like what um, Katawa Shoujo was, that one about the crippled girl. <laughs> did they have different writers for each person? For a lot of them, they did. Hmm. Well, I, think, I mean, my question I think would one be... one person did, like, two each, something like that. Okay. Well, one question I would have is, um, in those types of games, just to say in general, is it a situation where at the start of the game you pick a girl and then you just go all the way through her thing? It's not usually as simple as picking them. Your actions kind of warrant which girl's going to like you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of go down their little story path. Okay. I mean, you can kind of be like, oh, I read the, like little info deal about this girl, so I'm going to choose these answers from the very beginning to sort of Mm. try it that way. But, like, you don't really, in the game, pick one. It's, like you said, it's your actions. It's usually pretty transparent, though. I mean, if you want, like, the sporty girl, you just do the answers that are like, boy, I sure like soccer. Yeah. Things like that. They're usually pretty transparent. Mm -hmm. And how common is it for, um, say... I'm thinking of Harvest Moon again, like a scene which affects you no matter which which storyline you pick. So, like, the big dance is on October 5th no matter which girl you're going after. Yeah, I mean... Is that common, or is it more common to have, you know, each storyline be a bit more separate? Uh, I mean, I would say there's usually, like, you go on dates, but then there's, like, oh, the festival or whatever, and, you know, you pick which one... Uh, I mean, I, I would assume there's a lot of intersection points with common text just to <laughs> cut down on the... Uh, having to write six different games aspect. It's true. Yeah. Because I mean, that's that's a lot of resources, a lot of money you'd have to put into that. Um, that's that's what I've run into. Yeah. I haven't played too many, but that's what yeah. I've run into every time. My a lot of my big ex- my big experience lately has been with uh, actually a Wii game, uh, Sakura Wars. So long, my love. Oh, is that uh, what that's like? I have that, and I haven't even. Oh, played you it. you absolutely have to play it. This is it. This game is gonna like crack my uh, top twenty five list. I think. Because. Yeah. Um, uh, after after introducing it just now as a visual novel, I would actually uh, describe it as the perfect Paul RPG. Yep. Because what the game is, it's uh, uh, it's divided up into uh, several chapters. I think like seven. Uh, and the first part is about uh, like an hour, an hour and a half of you walking around and talking to people. And then the last fifteen minutes is a big battle. So it it, uh, it cuts out all of the little uh, lame battles. <laughs> In an RPG, and it's like it just has the boss battles, and it replaces the lame battles with you know, uh, dating girls. Sweet, actually, it's, uh, it's really cool. interesting. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like Shadow of the Colossus, but with dating. Yes, 
<laughs> except the battles are much easier than that. <laughs> it sounds sort of like Fire Emblem, except people always skipped over the storyline sections in Fire yes, Emblem in part, between the battles. A, it's a game based on the part that most people skip. <laughs> really? It's like, that's not fair. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm very, very much enjoying the game. I'm just uh, at, the end, at the end now, and I, I kind of want to play the other three games in the series, but they're all in Japanese, so that might be a problem. All right, so now I know everything, and I am perfect for getting this job. Yes. <laughs> All right. So um, what was my topic that I have here on the topic pile? It's describe the perfect visual novel. I think Paul... If you got to write the perfect visual novel, what would it be? I like the uh, the note that you put at the end of that saying, hint, all the handsome men in the game are based off of game cola writers. <laughs> I think we should do that. We should we Ooh. should do that as a prelude to the game called RPG. That would be way easier to uh, program. That's true. We just, we could totally uh, just have each writer write their own path. Oh, that's true. Right. Yeah. Oh, you pick one of six guys. Paste it all into Renpy and we're done. Yeah. Yeah, we could do this. Like, uh, oh, we, I mean, we could we could even make it an MF- FMV game. Yeah. Um, I think actually I was uh, talking with Christian and Matt about yeah. this over Twitter before. We could make it like a. Uh, like a dating service where we each record videos of ourselves and uh, like on a webcam, that kind of thing. Wow, this is and I, I... <laughs> totally possible. This this will be the best game for the Jaguar uh, to come out in years. <laughs> <laughs> are there visual novels which are not dating sims? I think so. I would say probably. Yeah. <laughs> probably, but nobody plays yeah. them. Well, the the, yeah. the 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 problem with uh, being a fan of visual novels in the United States is that they're all in Japan. Yeah, I mean, like, oh, the, yeah, I know. I've... Like in Japan, they actually have visual novels besides ones that are also RPGs coming out on consoles. But uh, here, since it's an enormous amount of work to translate it, and since people in games where they shoot things, uh, it's they're hard to come by. Yeah. Well, isn't nine 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 basically that? It it very much is, uh, even more so it than... Uh, it has right. adventure game segments, but they were made by a different yeah. company at the well, same time. It's, it's, it's uh, kind of similar to Sakura Wars in that aspect, where it's huge, huge chunks of text uh, divided up every now and then by a puzzle instead of an RPG battle. Hmm. So what about Deja Vu? Is that a visual novel? That, I, I would not classify that as such. No? That's an, that is an RPG. No. That is an adventure game. Kind of an adventure game. game. It's kind of somewhere in between an adventure game. Like, it's not quite... I mean... I called it um, the precursor to Phoenix Wright. (laughs) And how much better would Phoenix Wright be if they had a punch button? (laughs) (laughs) Phoenix Or if you could punch yourself. (laughs) Punch self. Can you punch yourself in that game? I I mean, I'm pretty sure... Oh, yeah. I know you can shoot yourself. I'm pretty sure... Yeah, yeah, because I... I think it says, like, pow on the whole screen. Yeah. And then I think it comes back and it's like, well, there, you hit yourself. I don't know what that solved, but <laughs> there you go. Sounds- Every time you punch something, it says pow on the main screen. So it's yeah. not like we need a separate animation for punching yourself. Yeah. But I guess it does It does certainly have a, a lot more text and uh, I guess you could call it story than uh, your uh, typical NES game, that's for sure. It seemed a lot more... Uh, like inspired by like pulp novels and stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, I would, noir. I would still personally call uh, classified as a first-person adventure game, though. Yeah, one of those FPAs. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, Michael Ridgeway asked if it is too late to join the podcast. We can bring him in. I think so. Yeah, let's uh, bring him in. We think? can ask his opinion about visual novels. He did miss out on the intro. <laughs> Okay, we need to pretend to be yelling at each other or something. No, we we just need to start the podcast over again, I think. No, 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 no. no. (laughs) So so is it bizarre to have a video game character crush on you? Oh, absolutely. It's really weird. Paul, quit trying to pretend that you do not love Maya. I don't love her. I want to be her friend. You love her because you want want to be her friend. She needs a friend in her life. She has a friend, and his name is Phoenix. No, you know what? what you know where this is going to lead. Her relationship's just going to lead to her marrying a friggin' roller coaster. <laughs> you know that's what's going to happen. It happened before. It'll happen again. This Boy, is why they can't problem. have her in the newest Phoenix Wright game, Paul. It's because of people like you. Because of the roller coaster. No, it's because you just build so much mythos and things around her that they have to cut her out. Because there's no way they can fulfill your sick expectations. 
Where she parked the roller coaster. Oh, you sound like someone who's been friend zoned, okay? <laughs> you I sound like it. the guy who's like, oh man, she needs a really nice guy, and that guy is just a jerk, and he's not going to treat her right. Yeah, that roller That's coaster. That's you sound like, Paul. Roller coaster is really mean to her. <laughs> so, uh... so, hey, Michael Ridgway, that was a fake argument we made up just for you. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like not Phoenix right at all. I mean, appreciate Actually, it. Actually, Mike, we're, uh, we're talking about visual novels right now. Uh, you, there are you now, okay. Do you want to introduce yeah. yourself? Uh, I can uh, cut it. I, I'm Mike Ridgway. I've uh, done a number of things uh, for Game Cola over the years. I uh, started out with Quam Geek, then there's a... Uh, uh, I occasionally do that Anger Dome thing, and then there's a... Uh, all the time you doing this player two thing, and I espouse opinions that other people don't like. So that is true. Oh wait, no, I thought that was Nicholas <laughs> Suprek. <laughs> That's also true. But uh, I, I, I thought that seemed like the natural extension of what Mike was already doing, stirring up trouble on the website. Well, you know, gotta get them clicks, yo. <laughs> oh, I like that. I loved the uh, the what like forty comment war about uh, Mass Effect earlier. Oh God. <laughs> I still haven't seen the ending, like the, the new ending. Well, I, uh, I, I take that back. I've watched it. I haven't played yeah. through Liz, Lizzo played it. She was like, I don't understand why they even had to change it. So. Yeah. No, it was. I have a feeling that's how I'm going to be. I'm going to get to the end. I'm going to be like, what's the problem with this? So visual novels. Mike, uh, do you have any experience playing them? Uh, define visual novel for me. So I have uh, a game. game. A game without gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I, I do, but, uh, you know, whatever, I don't care, because it's, they're typically uh, a naughty variety, so there you go. <laughs> oh, that's, that's an, uh, an area we didn't, uh, go into at all yet. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah that's right, I, uh, Matt I, Gardner is... going to that area. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm trying out as a writer for a visual novel, and I'm specifically not trying out for the naughty visual novel. That's yeah. right. Yeah, what can I say? I, uh... I, th I think we had about uh, wrapped up visual novels anyway, so you ready to move on to the next topic? Yeah, what is, what is the next topic? Um, I was going to talk to Christian Porter about Simon the Sorcerer, but I don't think ha anybody else has played it. Nope. Mm -mm. Not yet. Not yet. On that. It's a good one. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I heard uh, that from, much. I heard but... it was terrible. Really? It's I a, love it. <laughs> it's a well-designed game. It's just um, there are problems. The map system is horrible. And I think that's just because it was, um, whatever you call it, an early 90s adventure games. Yeah, I mean, it's just, there are like 40 different locations, and half of them are empty. They're just scenery. So it's very easy to get lost. I do remember getting lost a lot. It, I think it was also my first adventure game I ever played, so a lot of it's probably just nostalgic. I, I readily admit that, but I, I like it. I think it's a funny game. It's a good time. Some of the jokes are a bit off-color, but it, otherwise, yeah, it's a very... Good graphics, solidly done. Should we go to the... I thought we had more to say, yeah, but I'm, I... Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm scrolling through okay. the topic pile here. now, trying to find one. Here, since we, one. We, well, since we have a, a good variety of people here, uh, got any stories of gaming tragedy, deleted save games, chewed up controllers, etc.? Oh, hell yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> so this... um, I mean, where... Jeez, okay, uh, let me just run down the list in my head. Um... I mean, there was a time I, I borked my entire save game in Final Fantasy VI. Yeah. Mm. Uh, because, it, it, as anyone knows, well, most people know, that game, like, the original release is glitchy as hell. Oh. And I think I was in the Phoenix Cave, and I was sketching with Realm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that the game just borks. Um, I think I, I just, I crafted my save game. Um, <clears throat> let's see, what else have I done? Um... Well, actually, I usually did, I did it to my little brother a lot because he would always save in the top slave, save slot. Yeah. So oh, I uh, would click, 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 and save over it. Yep. Yeah. Like, oops, sorry, Matt. And then there were the times that he would get to the end of the game, and I would just sort of pick it up and be just like, huh, well, I've watched you do all this other stuff. I'm just going to beat this guy. <laughs> oh, man, this is awesome. Hey, uh, dude, I'm just going to keep playing. And, yeah, I would, like, just take over his game because I'm a terrible brother. <laughs> Yeah, I have a I have a couple similar stories. Is I, oh, I mean I've tried to replay it recently and I can't stand the game Xenogears. When I was in high school, like I loved the game. It was like amazing, and I spent a really long time 
for whatever reason, I, I was having trouble beating the game, so I spent all this time, like, leveling up and getting all of the best equipment and everything, and then one day, it just deleted itself. Oh. And then, like, I didn't touch it again for, like, five years. Well, I mean, that, that'll do it. Yeah. Um... I have a lot of stories like that, too, mostly revolving around the Super Nintendo yeah. uh, and having the audacity to accidentally bump the system Yay. while you're playing it. Yeah. Because uh, oh. <laughs> as uh, any uh, <clears throat> longstanding Super Nintendo owners know, if you do that, it'll erase the first save file. Like, if you so much as touch the system, yeah. you're you're done. Yeah. Oh. Of course, the solution there that I've only recently learned is just use the second save file instead. <laughs> Well, uh, you just figured that out? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I never really noticed the trend that it only ever knocked out the first save file. I thought maybe it was just this, the active save file. But um, I've had other people say that perhaps it is just always the first one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I feel like I, I have a lot of stories revolving around games uh, either turned off or erased at inter- inopportune times. Um, my wife and I spent hours and hours and hours playing a co-op game of The Sims on the Xbox back in college. Uh, and then one of my roommates came into the room, uh, started talking with us, leaned on the Xbox, leaned on the reset button of the Xbox, and then Ooh. we suddenly didn't have any more babies. <laughs> they were yeah. all erased from existence. Oh. I th- was playing, what was it? It was the, the Monkey Island that was on PS2. Oh, oh um, Escape. Yeah. Yeah. And she had, I think she was just about at the end, and either you know, something happened that, that blew away the save. Mm. And she was just so frustrated. Um, I mean, <laughs> to, to have to to have slogged through all the way to the end of that game and then not be able to see the finish, man. Yeah, yeah. And actually, so so what I did for her basically, I mean, I, I watched it. I, I played it before. I knew most of the tricks, and I like over the span of two hours, like I just did all like the the puzzles really quickly, just like boop 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 boop, boop. Uh, and, and got her you know most of the way back, and then she's just like. Thank you. I can take it from here. Oh. <laughs> no one should cool down. Yes. At least, you know, with the adventure games, it's really not that bad if you yeah. lose your save because, you know, most of the time you spend on the game is just puzzling stuff out. Once you know it, it's just like, oh, well, this is this game is now an hour long. Yeah, I mean, you can even just, like, you know, watch TV or listen to music or something while you're doing it. It doesn't even oh, have yeah. to be, like, the thing you're doing. You can just kind of oh, yeah. go through the motions and get right back to where you left off. Or, you know, you know, someone who's learned the motions of a game and is just, you know, grinding, uh, you know, grinding or finishing up some side quests while he's doing a podcast. Yeah. And that's... <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. uh, I did that with a Secret of Mana one time. I lost uh, about a couple hours of progress because I had the audacity to bump into the system, and I just kind of went back and hit <laughs> rap yeah. with swords until I was there again. Yeah, even like if I'm if I hook up my old Super Nintendo, you know, I'm always just like I'm, I'm skittish as anything. It's just like, okay, no one touch it. <laughs> no one touch oh, the man. wires. No one touch the system. At this point, it, I don't I don't even bother. Like I will actually buy the Wii version of a Super Nintendo game I already have, so I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, and that has the added bonus too of a uh, Wii having a a pseudo quick save feature. So you don't have to yeah. worry about save points or anything like that. Yeah, I, I picked up a 3DS XL, and um, I noticed they had Gargoyles Quest on there, which I always wanted to play. It's an old, old Game Boy game. Remember the Gargoyle from um, Ghosts and Goblins? This is the game about him. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a decent little, like, action RPG. But it's hard. It's, it's old school hard. You know, you lose your life, you got to start all the way back at the town. But they have, like, a little save state feature in that, which... Makes the game actually much more bearable, um, <laughs> using that to great effect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think um, if we're talking about like video game horror stories, I have something a little bit different from lost save games. Um, maybe not. Maybe this has probably happened to other people. When you play a game and you unlock an achievement, but the system thinks you didn't do it. Mm-hmm. Now I'm just thinking about. Um, actually, it's the game I played during the uh, game Cola 10 Hour Potacular. Oh, that's right, yeah. And I was trying to get the achievement. Okay, beat the game in under three hours, and so I did. But I mean, it's like, well, okay, I spent, you know, I had to play the game like three times to get that achievement, and then still. It, didn't accept that achievement. Oh. So when I got New Vegas, I don't know if you guys remember, 
But when New Vegas came out, it was a little buggy. Uh, uh, is this – wait, is this uh, the one with the people floating around and their heads spinning around and stuff? Yeah, yeah no, Fall, Fallout New Vegas was a buggy mess for the first thing. <laughs> Uh, and one of these bugs was actually that falls right in line with this. It's pretty terrible on the PC version. Uh, so it it auto save. You can do an auto save and a quick save. But there was a bug such that if the game would like auto save, like in the beginning, like the first auto save and the first quick save would save. But after that, anytime it auto saved or quick save, basically it would do like the first auto save or quick save from when you started. But then none of the others. Mm. So you could play for two. I played for two or three hours, and I was auto saving and quick saving left and right. And you know, I, I opened my game up next time, and nothing. I'm like what the hell? And found out online that that was the case. Wow. Now you could manually go into the save menu and save that way. But the thing is, you know, that takes a you know good twenty to thirty seconds, which you know, in the base game and things. It isn't a lot, but still, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're not gonna do that if you can quick save. You know, yeah, it defeats right. the purpose of having the quick save. Yeah, exactly. So someone fa- figured out a workaround where if you bring up the debug menu, it's just you, there's a quick save command that would work. And I just started doing that. You know, it's just you know, you hit the little tilde button, and the debug console would would save the quick save message in there, and you just gotta hit up to go back to it, and just you know. Just till day up, enter, and you you saved. <sighs> Turns out all the achievements in Fallout New Vegas are turned off if you use the debug menu. Oh no! So I, achievements aren't the biggest thing in the world to me, but I was doing all this stuff, and I'm noticing it's like, why why isn't the game like telling me good job or whatever? Why am I why am I not getting my chivos? And uh, yeah, I found that out, you know, two thirds of the way through the game. I think, you know, less than a week later, they fixed that problem because it was a pretty big damn problem. Yeah, but at that point, you would have already missed your opportunity for a whole bunch of Chivos, at least a story-based yeah, one. So, yeah, well, yeah. you know, fortunately, um, Went I, back, have, didn't you? I just checked today. I have 388 hours logged on New Vegas. <laughs> um, so it wasn't – it was a pretty non-issue. <laughs> um, yeah. Wow. Man, and I, I, I thought my 90 hours in Fallout 3 was, was something. Paul, I, I don't think you understand just how much... Well, of course you do, because I rant about this yes. on the site like every other time I talk. <laughs> I love Fallout so very much. It is the bee's knees. Yeah, I think uh, the only other one that I have to say is... Uh, I forgot what game it was. It, I mean, this happened like a few times, but that I would be fighting a boss or something... And at the time, we owned a dog. And the dog would just run through and knock out the controller and pull the game out of the wall. and uh, just uh, Yeah, well, my cat does that these days. Yeah. yeah. The wonders of a wireless technology. Now you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. That's, that's true. The wonders yeah. of no longer having pets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Weirdly, that was the last time anyone ever saw that dog. <laughs> this, is, this is somewhat related. Um, a little bit... Side tangent, but I think uh, it's interesting. Do you have a story about murdering your pet also? No, uh, no, that, that... No, Paul, you know, why would you... That's, that's, what that's are you trying to suggest? <laughs> um, Just saying Fluffy was never the same after that. Uh, no, but speaking of, you know, the old-time consoles and whatnot. So, Paul, you know this, and maybe some other people know this. Um, myself and a friend are in charge of the game room at MagFest. And we, we, we like to have we like to have old-school games... But the you know the fact that the older systems are breaking down and uh, well you know they're they're fussy as they are so it's sort of a stopgap solution. I had a couple of things come in the day that I you know I can certainly tell you more about later and see how they work. But um, these re- these basically these bootleg retro systems <laughs> that you can get on Amazon, you can get them on ThinkGeek, whatever. I mean they I mean they're legal. No, those, uh, those things actually look pretty boss. I was wondering if they actually worked or not. Yeah, I mean, I got two here. I got the. I've heard they work pretty well. The only thing people complain about is the sound. So really? I've got the Retron 3, which plays NES, SNES, and Genesis games. Mm-hmm. It has a controller that looks like sort of like a Genesis controller, but um, in addition to an ABC buttons on the right, uh, it has XYZ above that. It does, and these are wireless controllers. 
And then the retro duo is just NES and what? Oh, they, they, there's an additional adapter you can buy for them. But right now it's just, it's just NES and SNES. And the controller is just, it's a Super NES controller. So we're going to fire these up this weekend and actually see how well they do. It'll Try sound. brushing up against it to see if it races your save file. <laughs> <laughs> you know, considering that they're sort of bootleg systems, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if they, you know, delete your save file, file and, like, melt your game. <laughs> so yeah, I, 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 I don't trust that one that has Nintendo and Sega commingling. That doesn't feel right to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's an abomination. <laughs> there, I feel like there should be a law against that. <laughs> <laughs> it must be stopped. Yes. <laughs> But what presidential about Mario candidate. and Sonic at the uh, Olympic Winter Games? Yeah, there's there's a difference between Mario and Sonic interacting in 2012 in a new game versus mm-hmm. a Super Nintendo and a Sega Genesis being like on the same melded system. together. It seems but, like that game is consensual, where this system is not <laughs> consensual. Oh God, it's like inner species rape or something. man at a roller coaster. <laughs> right? Any other video game disasters people have yeah. had? Christian, did you have any stories? I really don't, because I guess when something video game related that's bad happens to me, I let it go after 20 years. <laughs> but, oh, really? not you guys. Well, la dee da, mister. I'm on a more mature plane than the rest of you, and don't bear grudges against inanimate objects. I have almost had a tragedy, because I've been playing Persona 3 on the PS3, and God, that save system is buggy. I will. Just, I'll try to save. It'll be like, no, there's no, there's no card here. I'll be like, yeah, I know. It's it's a virtual card. You implemented it in your code, and it'll just be like, no, there's there's no card here anymore. But other than that, close call. Nothing that I can really think of. I played a PlayStation game where every time you would save, it would just automatically create a new save file until they were all filled up, and then it wouldn't let you delete them. <laughs> That was fun. I I recently played the the seventh guest for iPad. This is going to be the topic of my next inside the guide. But there were two puzzles I couldn't unlock while playing the game, and it turns out they left them out of the iPad version for technical reasons. Mm-hmm. So I spent like two hours watching video walkthroughs of the game on YouTube and going through every single screen trying to figure out how do I unlock these two puzzles, which are supposed to be there. <laughs> They just they couldn't get it to work, so they were like, eh, whatever. It turns out the puzzle runs based off like the processor speed of your computer. Oh no, no! <laughs> uh, one of those. It's really which probably all over again. works. It probably worked in 1992, yes. but apparently the iPad is a bit stronger than a 1992 computer. <laughs> runs a, runs a tad faster. Well, they couldn't just like add a multiplier or something. <laughs> No, what they did was they released that puzzle separately for two dollars on the iPad. Wow, oh. as a separate game. Yeah, that's a brilliant oh. idea. It's the uh, seventh guest infection for iPad. Oh. The microscope puzzle, and if you've played the game, you probably would know what that is. I do have oh. seventh guest though around here somewhere. I also uh, recently found Phantasmagoria. Uh-huh. All like 32 discs <laughs> that it has. Yes. <laughs> That's not even the ha- like each disc is like 40 minutes of content too. <laughs> it's like if that, they really uh, had to cram that that video footage in there. Man, you're in for a treat though. Yeah. Uh, it's on my backlog up. too. Although no, I, I I I told you this, Christian, but uh, you really really should play with a walkthrough handy uh, because the game gets very frustrating very quickly. Uh, it's not so much that the puzzles don't make sense, as a lot of them are based on, like, uh, okay, you did this thing, now time has passed, so you can go here and do something else. Like, there are a lot of puzzles that have no logical connection, they require you to just go here, because it is now later in the day, and now this guy is here. Oh, like, you have to be at the right place at the right time? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's so annoying. Mm-hmm. Like, the Sega CD Sherlock Holmes game. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I played through almost the whole game, um... There's that uh, adventure game hints website, UHS, that uh, it gives you the hints incrementally, where it says, like, uh, it, was, it was actually exactly like how you did your walkthrough for uh, Life in the Dorms, Christian. Uh, oh, I thought I be- made that up. <laughs> I thought you were basing it on UHS. No, well. no, where, like, the first hint is, like, something smells bad in the cafeteria. And then it's like, maybe you should look at the soup. And it's like, there's a rat in the soup. Pick it up and use it. Stuff like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, that's just like mine. Yeah. Mine would just so, get really I was, I was, at the end. I was essentially playing through the game with that open on one monitor and just following the first level of hint every time, so I, I didn't have to 
spend a lot of time just being annoyed, wondering where I'm supposed to be at any given moment. So, mm. Anyway, I would recommend if anyone's playing <laughs> Phantasmagoria in 2012, they should do it that way. Yes. That was also a problem with the seventh guest with the FMV cutscenes was that the order the scenes play in makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> so, for example, um, I don't know if you guys have played the seventh guest. You haven't. It's it's like Willy Wonka meets Evil Dead. <laughs> wow. But basically, he yeah, invites but... he, he just invites seven lucky guests to his fabulous mansion, <laughs> and it's a toy maker who's apparently a devil worshipper and things like that. And they all die in gruesome ways. But the thing is, all the scenes are out of order, so characters will appear in scenes after they've died. <laughs> and, and no, it's not that I played the puzzles out of order. The scenes are really that out of order. I was going to ask. But I'm thinking of one particular uh, puzzle. Um, it's the coin puzzle in the room where um, right before seeing the puzzles, you see the death of this guy. Y you see him die, and yeah. it's basically... You know, sort of, like I said, like Willy Wonka, he wanted to come because he wanted to become fabulously rich. He wanted to become filthy rich. And he finds a suitcase full of money, and the money's poisoned, and it kills him. Okay. Because he eats money. Yeah. Well, does he go swimming in it? Like... No, he grabs the money, and he's screaming in pain after he realizes the money is killing him. You and put down the money. I know. That's that that's the lead great. into the coin puzzle, and unlocking the coin puzzle, it opens the door to the next room, and in the next room, you have a scene of him going to the next room. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, really, you just saw the scene of him dying. It's like they just didn't want to set up any any variables for, like, if this person's dead, don't do this. They're like, eh, whatever. People will figure it out. No, it's a horror <laughs> game, so he's undead. <laughs> I feel He's like, you know, dead. if someone's going to die for money, it's going to be like <laughs> Uncle Scrooge jumping into his pit full of gold coins and, you know, it actually acting like gold coins would. <laughs> you mean <laughs> by <laughs> acting as a fluid and getting out of his way and letting him swim through it? Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, speaking of the seventh guest in Willy Wonka, um, <laughs> actually, has anybody read Charlie or in the Great Glass glass elevator the sequel to it i did in like fifth grade i did in third grade yeah there's a oh. sequel yeah there yes. is a sequel one of the death sequences in the seventh guest is taken like directly from the sequel i don't know if it's intentional or not but it's the woman who wants to become younger and she turns into a baby no okay is this game fmv it's an fmv game I, so, so they have I her should, looking in the mirror, and then they have a, a younger actress being her younger, and they have a little baby playing her walking away. I I am shocked that I've I've never it's never occurred to me to play this game. I knew it was a game, but I didn't know it was this awesome. <laughs> it came with like every computer in the mid nineties. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I've like, heard. well, I I feel like you're like me. In that, well, I feel like you appreciate bad games in the way that I appreciate bad movies. I I, I find them a lot of fun. I, I enjoy laughing at them. <laughs> I find them. Goofy. Yeah, I can understand that. And just I one appreciate final bad comment. everything. No, I was just going to make one final comment. It's worse than the Willy Wonka version because the person who gets progressively younger eventually just disappears. Oh, Dude, gets younger. They go like through, through all the prenatal steps. Like, are they an embryo and? <laughs> That um that's what happens in the Willy Wonka. The person takes a pill which takes you back like uh, six years, and so it takes them back before they were even born. And Willy Willy Wonka's like, oh, I guess she'll show up in uh, another six years or so. No need for us to hang around here. For me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I feel like Willy Wonka has uh you know sort of a limited understanding of biology. Mm. Although if he can make a, a Something or other that makes someone age back in time six years. Maybe he has actually an excellent biology background here. I mean, I guess he probably has to, considering he's made candies that do all sorts of horrible things to the human physiology. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Willy Wonka, is it magic or is it science? Uh, it's it's uh, science, some of it is. Yes. I'll say that, because I... I barely recall the sequel because they never made a movie out of it and only <laughs> the only thing people know is the movie but it ends with him going into space yeah <laughs> wait how have they not gone back and made this movie they're they astronauts a story too and they haven't done this yet come on well no i thought uh, i thought the first one ended with them in space no the first one ends with um 
Well, no, they take the... He goes in the great glass elevator, which goes up and down. Yeah, well, and then they go up, 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 and up, and into space. Yeah, and they go up, 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 and up, but, and I, thought I that's mean, how the second... The second one the second started. book is... I thought it started oh. with them in space. No, the second book... Oh, like, we've read the book. Somebody's going to have to Wikipedia this for us, because we haven't read it within the past ten years, but... <laughs> I seem to recall that it. Uh, the second book is towards the end, where he goes up into space and has adventures with the astronauts. But first he goes down under the earth, and that's where we have the adventure of people shrinking back before they're conceived. Hold on. Uh, what was the name of it? Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator. Charlie and uh, the Great Glass Elevator. They apparently didn't make a movie out of it because the person who wrote the book hated the first movie. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, he hated it. The book begins. Really? Hold on. It's apparently not very uh, close to the book. I don't remember. Uh... Yeah, it pretty much starts with them. Okay, so the book starts in space. Well, it, uh, okay. it says, uh, the book begins where Charlie and Chocolate Factory ends. Willy Wonka has just given Charlie ownership of the factory. They crash through the roof of Charlie's house with a flying elevator to inform his family of the good news. Oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah, uh... The, the first book is, like, they have, like, six people and horrible things happen to them. Yeah. But they're all dead by the end of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, so the sequel... I mean, it really, it really is, like, a... Yeah. It's like a horror movie. <laughs> the sequel is him stopping off at Charlie's house to pick up more people just so horrible things can happen to them. Uh, well, it's a horror movie. This is like this is like any Friday the thirteenth, any nightmare on Elm Street, any like scream, just slowly slightly more kid friend. Yeah. Yeah. Knocking off each one one by one. Yep. Yeah. I think Eli Roth should do like a remake. Yeah, I could say. Saw that. eight should be set in the chocolate factory. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, Willy Wonka is halfway to Jigsaw anyway. <laughs> uh, so video games. Is it is it time to move on to uh, reader mail? We have five emails. Oh, we have to yeah, that already? Good Let's Lord. do this. Yeah. yeah, how much time oh. is left in the podcast? We can just like, reader mail and then end? Yeah, I mean, there's only like uh, 20 minutes left maybe, so we're okay. reasonably into the podcast. Uh, oh, we actually got... Man, I, I can't believe we're getting this much mail. Like I know. Like a month-to-month basis. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Number one, email to the podcast. Uh, I never know what to put as the subject to emails. It's a problem. Anyways, hello, podcast personnel. I really enjoy that title for people of the podcast. Must be the writer in me uh, enjoying the alliteration. I really enjoy being read and responded to on the podcast. Hey, uh, I know I've mentioned this before, but it makes me happy every time. It makes me want to continue the communication and, of course, being a fan. Uh, it's also nice to make my existence known to you guys. It makes me feel less creepy about knowing about your lives. You talk about a lot of stuff on the podcast, even about your personal lives, and it makes one feel a little creepy before they contact you because you don't even know that person's <laughs> existence, if that makes sense. <laughs> That's our new strong Game Cola. Creepy. Game Cola, you will be uncomfortable. <laughs> Anyways, again, I thought of more questions about drumroll, cosplay. Uh, cosplay? Yes. Is that when you, like, start swearing at people while wearing costumes? C- cosplay? That's how I do it. Listening to previous podcasts, I know about some of everyone's experience in this field. I have very little. Uh, I feel like I have very little background in a lot of things whenever I write to you guys. Uh, I'm really not a huge video game person. Uh, however, <laughs> I see why you listen to the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> however, I remember in the previous podcast you discussed cosplaying Princess Peach at some point as a joke, which I'm proud and a little ashamed to admit I have done. I was at summer camp. We played live action Mario Kart, and I was Peach, who is also always my character of choice whenever I play Mario Kart. But unfortunately, I came in last. This is not an actual representation of how I actually play Mario Kart, since I actually win every single time. My questions. Do you enjoy racing games? Do you enjoy cosplay? Is it easier to cosplay a video game character or a character from a book? Uh, Also, how would you feel if someone cosplayed a character you created? I feel like that would be really weird. Looking forward to hearing your answers. Julia. Okay, well, um, I think number one, if you can't come up with a topic for uh, the subject line of your email, just use a line from a random song you just heard. That's what I do sometimes. It's like there's no there's no particular um, subject line I can think of. It's like, okay, what's what's the line on the song I'm listening to right now? 
that's the new subject. Oh, Jetty's going to get a flood of emails with the subject line, hey, I just met you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> oh. Well, my last one was he clearly has a terrible cold. <laughs> oh. Or uh, moves like Jagger or like, you don't know you're beautiful. Yeah. It's, what what is what's popular right now? Is it baby baby baby? Oh, is that still? Oh wait, oh it's no Friday, idea. Friday. Got to get down on yes. Friday. <laughs> like, Friday was like <laughs> two years ago. ago. <laughs> is it, isn't it Mbop? <laughs> yeah. Back streets, back. All right, all right. <laughs> I try to avoid using the chorus of a song. Use one of the lines from the verses, <laughs> yeah. just to really confuse people. <laughs> Oh man! And Here's it's songs they've never heard right. anyway, and, so uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, was, was I the only one who used song lyrics as away messages in middle school? <laughs> was no, the, Paul, I, we I all guess. did that, but we don't talk about it because it's embarrassing. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Mike, is your did you ever uh, get around to deleting your live journal? By the way. Oh shit! No, I got it. Wait, no, I think I did that. I think, I think. I think I got an email a while ago that says they did that. Uh, it's, it's I fine. Uh, I backed it up onto my desktop, so I'll, I'll put a link up uh, on the in the show notes. Oh, so, do you enjoy racing games? Racing games. Depends. No. <laughs> no. Uh, no, it depends. All right, so, since you mentioned Mario Kart, um, and, and maybe this is probably just how I, I prefer my games in, in general. I, I like racing games, but I also like cartoony racing games. Like, I've never got a whole lot of enjoyment out of, you know, Grand Prix, F1 pole position, whatever. <laughs> I, I like, you know, I like Mario Kart. I like F-Zero. I liked uh, Beetle Adventure Racing. I played the hell out of that game. Just stuff that's not, like, normal driving, because like, I can go out and drive the car, but... Yeah, I, can't, I mean, like, if it doesn't have turtle shells, what's the point? Right, it's like, I, you know, I, I, I can't shoot things at people when I'm driving, and... <laughs> <laughs> you could. Apparently that's frowned upon in civilized society. I mean, but if you tried to throw a uh, a banana peel out in the road, you might get uh, arrested for littering. Yes. So. And I'm kind of in that same boat. Like I I play the more arcadey type racing games. The serious ones like Forza, though, that's just a game of me rubbing a car against a wall <laughs> because like I just can't <laughs> control it. I actually I yeah. can't stand like. I can handle racing games to an extent on consoles, but when I actually play them in an arcade, the controls are so twitchy. Like, yeah. there's no real control. It's either you're careening to the left or careening to the right, and, like, yeah. you just yeah. floor it and go. I'm, I'm completely on board with that. Like, I've, I've, I've been driving an actual car with a steering wheel for a very long <laughs> time now, but put me in a video game where I have to do that, and I just I lose my mind. Yeah. Like, I have no idea, like... I'm just supposed to hit the accelerator the entire time, right? That's how driving works? Okay. <laughs> Why am I running into everything? Yeah. No, I, I, I used to think I liked racing games, but it turned out I just liked Mario Kart 64. Yeah. I don't yeah. I don't think I liked them as a whole. Did he call them racing? Did he call them racing is another good one? No, no, that's not. That's... No, Paul, you're wrong. Did he call them racing? <laughs> Do you enjoy cosplay? Is is this the same group of people we had talking about this before? Uh, I think except for Mike. Which I wasn't way? here. I was not here. No. Yeah, the two Michaels were not cosplaying earlier. So I sent in the email about cosplay. <laughs> oh, did you? <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was about my friend. Um, let's call him R, who I saw cosplaying oh, yeah, Detective right. Gumshoe yeah. at Fanime 2008. And then we saw uh, the video proof of Paul uh, cosplaying. <sighs> that was not mm-hmm. me. Same video. <laughs> I'm not a girl. <laughs> um, you know, I don't conclusively like... conclusively by doctors. Go ahead, sorry. I don't really like cosplaying, I guess because it's a bit too much work to actually find costumes. I remember um, last year I had to play Peter Pan in a Disney play. It's like, okay, well, I'm just going to get a green shirt and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wrote the script for the girls who had to play the uh, Disney princesses, and I had them sing Disney songs because I thought that would be fun. Yes. And, and apparently they have horrible singing voices, and they hated me for it. So they bought me, like, the official Peter Pan costume with tights and everything. So I had to wear it. Wow. Speaking of get things revenge. that are going in the show notes. <laughs> the video footage of that, that play, I think, has unfortunately been lost. But oh. apparently... No, no, no. Somebody has it. But do you know that you're not supposed to run in tights? <laughs> 
You know what happens when you wear tights for the first time and run across a, a clean stage? You fall down. Everybody thought it was part of the play. And they're like, wow, Michael, that was so hilarious how you were pretending to fall all the time. <laughs> like, no. No. I broke my coccyx. <laughs> That's a funny word. <laughs> Take me to the hospital now. Thanks. We really need to get uh, Kate J on the podcast because she – actually does cosplay she builds yes. uh she puts together very very elaborate costumes i see her talking no, about she, on Facebook. She's quite talented. yeah so uh, i mean if people really want to uh hear us talk about that uh and i'm guessing maybe they do because this is the second time it's come up uh maybe we can try to get her on sometime to talk about it mm-hmm. uh is it easier to cosplay a video game character or a character from a book uh, a book a book a oh book. what what's a book uh, it's like a visual novel, except without the visual part. Okay, cool. Sounds fun. <laughs> yes. Uh, I would think it would be easier to cosplay a video game character, because, like, the the look is, like, solidified. You have a good concept yeah. of what they look like. I, I think mean, it'd be easier to do a book really, character. I mean, unless there's, like, really well-established images of what the character looks like, like, you know, Harry Potter or something like that. Yeah. You, know, you can walk around as a video game character, and even if it's, like, Super obscure. Someone's going to get it, but uh, you know, if it's your interpretation of yeah, what was said in a book, a character from a book. I mean, yeah. the flip side is that since uh, there there isn't necessarily a, a a wide widely known visual representation of characters in a books, you can just like show up dressed as yourself and say, you know, I'm Harry Potter. Uh, oh, so what you're saying is you can well, half-ass it. Yeah, that's exactly. Well, in this universe, also, uh, the movies don't exist. No, I'm but, totally Marco but yes. from Animorphs. <laughs> you, could have, you could have more leeway in the book characters. I think that's it. Because I think you cosplay. You, you, I'm Holden Caulfield. I mean, yeah. I mean, you can you can totally have more leeway, but you know, it's also you know less to the point of I think cosplaying where you know you want to be recognized. Well, I guess it depends yeah. on, on how into the cosplaying you are. If you're doing it just because you're supposed to, or if you're doing it for fun. I remember I, back in the original old game cola when it was just a monthly newsletter, and I believe Paul had problems finding a character he could dress up as because there aren't any video game characters with magnificent beards. <laughs> That's right. I wrote an entire Dear Readers about how I was upset about that. <laughs> this, 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 this was around the time when I realized that maybe I need to retire Dear Readers because I have nothing to say anymore. But, I mean, um, that seems something that, happens sometimes with cosplaying you see people trying to cosplay a character who is not their body type hmm. yeah see that's that's my problem look, with cosplaying. look there's like, nothing I'm, wrong yeah. with someone who's white with red hair cosplaying barrett <laughs> who's I barrett off. i i, I don't off. i don't don't catch that reference uh, the only final fantasy 7 yeah the only oh, black see, character in any game, game ever Oh. The, thing, the thing that always killed it for me is like I, my favorite movie is The Nightmare Before Christmas, and I would have loved to dress up as Jack Skellington at some point. But your waist is more than three inches wide. Exactly. I don't feel like I could have ever done justice. To it. Yeah. So you know, I, I'm I'm a, I'm a perfectionist. So if I want to you know dress up in character, I want to actually make it look good. That's I'll dress up like for Halloween and put a lot of, you know, put a decent amount of effort into a costume, but I, I don't do it more than that just because like I, I don't have the skills, nor do I have really the, I know it would just, I, I it consume me, you know, trying to do justice to the part. Like I, I tried to dress up as the monarch one year for Halloween and it wasn't. One one year I, I I taped a bunch of trash to myself and said I was a snack food monster. You mean what you dressed up, what, what how you uh, dressed last Thursday and <laughs> no, no, this was a number of years ago. And last Thursday. Yeah, like point zero four years ago. Like. I, I have very little patience for dressing up. Halloween must not be fun for you. Topic number three. Yes. Uh, <laughs> now, this this one, I guess, Paul and I can kind of talk a bit about. Uh, how would you feel if someone cosplayed a character you created? So what if there was some Life in the Dorms cosplay, Paul? That, I mean, that would be uh, an enormous compliment I, yeah. I would that be. already happened? Well, that was me. That doesn't really count. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay. I did, uh, for a, a trailer for the game, uh, make a giant cardboard box. I kind of painted it to look like the head of the main character, and then I put it on my head and danced around a little bit. Yes. No, uh, and now that I'm getting into games, I have actually... I've thought about going to conventions and stuff dressed as characters from my own games that I would make, like in sort of an attempt to advertise a bit. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know how all that would really work, especially if absolutely no one recognizes who I am. It would kind of be slightly pointless. But you tape like free yes. review codes to yourself. <laughs> yes, but, mm. I don't know. I think it would be it would be neat. It could be a uh, a locked game on Steam. <laughs> Well, it's funny because, I mean, as I mentioned earlier on in the podcast, I'm trying to get a job writing for a a visual novel dating sim type Did you dress up as a character for your interview? No, I did not dress up as a character for my interview. (laughs) Went to the interview as Sailor Jupiter. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, hmm, I mean, I don't know how I'd feel about that if it's like if some girl was to pretend to be this girl that I've written so much about dating and things like that that could get <laughs> awkward really really quickly oh man and 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 that, and that would happen too i've seen some of the fans that you uh that are on your blog <laughs> oh that oh no happen. i i don't I, i'm not i'm sorry i don't mean to uh to sound like i'm casting aspersions i mean whenever michael posts about like he uses whenever michael uses the word dating he gets like 10 replies saying you know maybe in a couple years when i'm old enough <laughs> <laughs> when my mom will let me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dang. Paul, you're right on the money. Did you actually read that comment that was from today? <laughs> <laughs> I told you. That's, again, I, I, that, that's not meant to uh, to be an insult to any Michael Gray fans that are listening. Yes. We do, have, we do have a few that come It's over. just, if he tried to date you, it would be a federal crime. That, that's all Paul is saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, what I'm thinking of is the one where you were talking about your road trip, and all of the comments were, come out to Idaho, come see me, I'm sure my parents will be okay with it. Oh. <laughs> That's definitely not cool. Oh. And there, was it's, that, it's, there was the Speak American, too, where that, that girl uh, was like, hey, I'm 12, let's get married. <laughs> <laughs> Game Cola, you will feel awkward. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, I mean, I, I I do I do appreciate that that kind of enthusiasm. So. Yeah. So, so is it time? Is it time for the next uh, email? Did you sure. say there's four more? <laughs> yes, there's four more. Okay. Okay. Uh, podcasts. Hello, Game Cola crew. I have two questions. One about podcasts. The other about gulp. Ace Attorney. Oh, I'll, no. I'll start with the Ace Attorney question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> as you know, the platform for Ace Attorney 5 had yet to be announced, and as you may or may not know, Shutakumi recently stated at PAX that there is a small possibility that the Ace Attorney series, at some point, could completely transition into iOS. I was just wondering what your thoughts were about that. Uh, let's go ahead and answer that before I continue on to the next question. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, since then, they've they've since announced that Ace Attorney 5 is going to be coming out on the 3DS. Yeah. Uh, unless yeah, I'm mistaken. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it will be coming out here. So. Um, End of conversation. Yeah. yeah I will I will uh, note that this was sent uh, yeah, yeah, like a full yeah, two weeks sure. ago. Yeah. More than two weeks ago. It'd be interesting. Um, apparently, they've released all the Ace Attorney games on the iOS system, except for um, the second Miles Edgeworth game. I mean, I would but, I would certainly prefer iOS over not that being released at all. Yeah. But, but uh, I mean, it's only for Japan anyway, so yeah. uh, it's nice that Japan gets iOS releases, mm-hmm. but we don't get them, so it's not really an issue for us whether or not they exist. Well, we got we got the uh, the original trilogy HD, didn't we? Or aren't we? We are allegedly going to. Yeah. So, I don't know. I prefer gaming on a gaming console. Mm-hmm. I would I would I don't really like playing video games on my iPhone. Yeah. But uh, that's because I'm an old fart. Well, Ace Attorney HD apparently has problems in that all the animations which worked on the DS version aren't there in the um, the iOS version. Hmm. So all the characters are just going to stare at you the whole time. They're not going <laughs> to blink their eyes at all, and it's just going to be creepy. Oh. Oh. All right, uh, what, what was the other question, Jetty? Oh, uh, my other question is about podcasts. You see, my friend and I w- would like to start a fan podcast about Hetalia Excess Powers. Uh, but we are not the most tech-savvy duo, unfortunately. I mean, we're completely clueless. Sorry, if you could tell us about basic equipment that we would need, how to set it up on iTunes, etc., that would be great. Thanks, Aubrey. This is the right podcast for that question, because I think everyone who's in here has uh, at least hosted and edited a podcast at some point. Well, uh, the thing is, is we don't actually set them up on iTunes. It's done through that script that Kevin made. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so there is that problem. So we don't know about iTunes, but um... well, if you can, if you can set up, 
I mean, <laughs> this is terrible, but the uh, I think the answer is to Google uh, a service that'll let you upload your podcast to it for free and create the feed for you, and then you can uh, just submit that to iTunes pretty easily. I think just like through their website. You can probably go to Google and search for how to set up a podcast on iTunes. Really, we are just not being very helpful here. But, uh, as for I know. Okay. How, how to actually record the podcast. Yes, uh, what, we're all over that part. To record the podcast. What we do, since we are across the country, me being in Florida, uh, Michael Gray being out in California, etc., uh, mm-hmm. and all you other guys wherever you are, uh, New Hampshire or whatever. New Hampshire, and Paul's right outside your living room. Paul? Shh, he can't see me. We, we use Skype uh, to do the talking, and then we have a program called CallGraph, which lets us record the conversation. Uh, We're still using CallGraph. Okay. I then I then open the file up in Audacity afterwards to edit it. Other than that, just having a microphone, you know, and a computer. Yeah. And then get Kevin to set up something for you to upload it to iTunes. Yes, I get. If you can do that. If you, if you guys are in the same room, I think you could reasonably just use your microphone and record straight into Audacity. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, pick, pick a quiet room. Um, yeah, get a decent microphone, you know. Get a decent mic, you know, maybe... If, if you can each have your own headset, that would even be better. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I don't know how uh, realistic that is. I don't know how that I would mean, work. we've even had people use the rock band microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, wait, can you... Can you have, can, uh, does computer support multiple headsets at once? Maybe that, maybe that wouldn't work. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think that's really... Oh. Thing. But if you're know, all I've in the just, same I've, room I've, together, it doesn't matter if you can't hear each other, I mean, <laughs> through the headsets. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just mean, if you have, you know, two people crowding around a microphone, uh, the microphone might not pick up each individual person as good as it was if you were, yeah. if you had your own dedicated microphone pointing right at your mouth, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then again, you can have fun fights for the microphone. That could yeah. be amusing. Uh, if, if you want an example of a podcast where it works like that, listen to our old Drama Queens podcast where there's five of us sitting around in a living room all uh, talking at the same microphone. <laughs> yeah, that's actually that's a really good example. Yeah. We should do one of those again. Oh, we should. I know. Right, next email? Yeah, next email. Right. In case you hadn't heard, dear guys at Game Cola, I was wondering if any of you were aware that a small explosion of details had surfaced about the fifth game in the Ace Attorney series, because I know... <laughs> Whoa. I know more than one of you is a fan of said series, uh, and found it a bit strange that you hadn't acknowledged its existence. Although, didn't didn't we? I I made I made two posts about it. I mean, granted, this was also again almost two weeks ago, or more than two weeks ago. I mean, I I, I posted the site as soon as I heard about it. Uh, I think like it was that night. The chat room was exploding with people talking about it, and I made a quick post. Yeah, it was within a day. Yeah. In Paul's defense, it was within a day, or at least two days. A, uh, a high-pitched girlish squeal actually echoed across uh, the country a couple weeks I, ago. That was cool. I had to. I, I had to replace my windows. They shattered. But <laughs> uh, you may have thought it was a bat, or maybe just uh, like uh, an air warning. Uh, no, no, it, it was Paul uh, announcing his glee at the uh, at the. News. So, assuming you aren't already in the know, it was recently announced that AA5 would take place a year after the game Apollo Justice, and will feature a newly reinstated Phoenix Wright as the protagonist. Again, this is a fact I'm sure a few of you know. When I saw that spiky hair, you know, my heart just, you know, sang. Phoenix, with the help of a new assistant, a girl in yellow that appears to be another defense attorney, will be defending a spazzy high school girl on the charge of setting off a bomb in the courtroom, facing off against Payne's younger brother. His evil younger brother, by the way. At this point, it is unknown who, if anyone, will appear from previous games. However, a gold chain in his pocket has been confirmed to be the locket with a picture of his daughter Trucy in it, indicating that she, and likely Apollo, will at least be mentioned in the game. So they haven't been retconned out of existence. <laughs> well, Apollo has, Trucy hasn't. Yeah, I mean, Tr- Trucy was adorable. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll Trucy, Trucy can stay. Apollo, GTFO. Uh, my, my, my favorite part of this news breaking was reading the comments on courtrecords.net, because every comment, I, I don't think I'm even exaggerating. Every comment where where people was people crying because Apollo was not the featured character <laughs> in this game. <laughs> Like it was like it was like a bizarro world game cola. <laughs> <laughs> 
it was like I couldn't believe it. like I, I knew that Apollo had his fans, but I didn't know that like they there was, that that was they everyone? were the only people that exist in the universe. Yeah. Like they were they it was so strange to me. It seemed to be that they were taking it for granted that Apollo was going to be the main star of the next game and, and they were shocked and chagrined and, and, and very, very sad about it. Whereas I was posting happy cat and gifts you, you on sat Game there, you know, wringing your hands like, being like, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably I like to think that Game Cola years. played they some part in this. Me. So, uh, is it time for the next email? Well, no, I want to talk more about the, the <laughs> Ace Attorney. Yeah. Paul, what do you think about, say, the fact that Maya's not in it? You're, you're just trying confirmed. to bait me, Michael. I don't, I don't know that I'm comfortable with this. Well, no, okay, well, we're talking about Apollo Justice well, and things like that, and it seems to be that they're not going to completely get rid of Apollo Justice. This yeah. is not like a complete regression back to the original Phoenix Wright trilogy. Even though yeah. Phoenix is still the main character, I mean, we're going back to him as a main character, but we've got a new sidekick. Yeah. Well, um, obviously, the thing that's bothering me is the same thing that bothered me about Apollo Justice is that I want to know where Maya is. I want to know why she's not there. Um, because, I mean, her and Phoenix's relationship is one of the things I enjoyed most about the uh, original series. So I'm kind of hoping. She's to Winston Payne. Don't. That's why he's not that. in this game. No. No. <laughs> She married I'm kind of hoping, uh, Payne. They, they just uh, haven't dropped the details on that yet, and not that she's being discluded from this game entirely, too, because uh, that would make it the game a harder sell on me, I'll put it that way. Well, I mean, you don't want them to drop the details right now before the game actually is oh, yeah, released, I, I, right? I, I mean, I you'd would want like to have it be in the game, but not find out about it until you play. Yeah, I mean, I, I, well, I would prefer knowing ahead of time that she is in the game. I don't necessarily need to know what role she plays. I just want confirmation that I'm not going to play the entire game going, okay, uh, when are we going to find out about her? Okay, that's cool. I'm on case four now. Is she going to pop up yet? Would you settle that's... for her being mentioned, you know, but not actually appearing? I, I mean, I would be I would be happy for uh, she's been the master of Karain and she hasn't been able to hang out with Phoenix as much. They did, I mean, mm-hmm. Apollo didn't even uh, give us that. Apollo just gave us uh, some mysterious woman sent us a bunch of uh, Silver Samurai DVDs. That was it. I think Apollo Justice is going to be the prosecutor in um, Ace Attorney 5, by the way. <laughs> I, think, I think that would be kind of cool. He's going to turn on Phoenix and become a prosecutor just so he can defeat Phoenix. I mean, I think that, I think that would be a fun way to work him in. I, I do agree that I, I think he will. Again, maybe it'll just be a passing mention. Maybe not. I do think he will uh, at least be involved in the game in some capacity. Apollo married Maya, and that's why we don't hear from them. Oh, stop it. I don't understand why they need to have a new Winston Payne, though. Like, his evil (laughs) brother? I guess they just wanted to make the first case more dramatic, so it's like, well, we can't turn him evil because that would ruin his character. (laughs) So it's his brother who looks and acts just like him. But they, they were talking, too, about how this game might have a darker tone than the original series, as uh, emphasized by the first case being revolving around the courtroom that we've been hanging out in all these years, blowing up. All the cases are about murders and death, though, so it's but hard to But the game always has kind of a light, cheery tone to it, regardless of what the content of the cases actually is. Yeah, that was something which bothered me about L.A. Noir when they said, you know, it's like Phoenix Wright for adults. It's like there are definitely adult elements in yeah. Phoenix Wright. Phoenix Wright is Phoenix Wright for adults. <laughs> there, there, there are some elements which are not safe for children, and it makes Phoenix a horrible guardian because he brings, like, eight-year-old Pearl around to murder investigations. But he's not her official guardian, so I guess he's he's off the hook for that. Next right, email. What's the next question? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for old times' sake. Hey guys, Rizaman here, and for old time's sake, I'm sending you guys a bunch of questions. Why? Because I'm bored. Number one, have you seen any of the Resident Evil movies? If not, lucky you. Have you guys seen any of the... No. No? I... No, I have not. I saw, I think, one of them. I think it was, like, the second one, and I just remember being like, oh, this is... Why am I watching this? Why are my friends making me watch this? There's a new one coming out, I understand. Uh... Hey, number two. <laughs> you may have answered this one already some other time. Uh, have you ever been so frustrated with a game that it drove you insane? That was this podcast. We talked about horrible experiences with games. <laughs> it's true. Uh, but I think maybe he's talking about a game where you had a puzzle or a challenge, which was so difficult it just drove you crazy. Yeah. Which is slightly different. Yeah. I think... Oh, oh, sorry. There have been 
some games where like no matter what you do you always fail like uh you know you didn't press that button you did not tell it to go there what it what is this game doing why is it doing this to me and you throw the controller at the screen and just you know you're playing the wii Mm -hmm. again um to get back to the seventh guess there are a couple of puzzles which are uh, the fastest puzzle solution takes over um 10 15 minutes i think that's just too ridiculous yeah and this puzzle should not have been included in the game somebody should have said this puzzle is ridiculously hard we should not include this or else everybody's going to hate it forever well like uh some fast-paced puzzle games like uh, tetris attack or something like that uh you'll be trying to move the cursor around so that you can like change some blocks or whatever and you're moving really quick and you click and it's like i i didn't click there i and then everything is ruined, and you had all this stuff lined up, you were going to win, and then the game just ruins everything for you. Just thanks. You totally didn't do what I told you to do, and now I have to start over again. I also hate it when I pause a game in the middle of an action, and when I unpause it, completely cancels out the action and kills me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, like you were charging up or something, and then you pause and you come back, and you made sure to hold down the button before you... Yeah, yeah. But uh, it releases it anyway. So, uh, number three. Halloween is almost near. Uh, so what game are you scared of most? Or if you ever got scared, what, what game? Um, this Halloween, there are two scary games I'm going to be playing. I'll be playing Nancy Drew, The Deadly Device. Yeah. And, 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 um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. No, um, 9992, which is uh, Virtue's, <laughs> Virtue's Last Reward. They're both coming out around Halloween, and they're both like horror games about murder. So it seems appropriate to play them. Yeah, somebody's yep. dying in the new Nancy Drew game. How exciting. Oh, finally. You know, her first. this is like her first murder case in um, 26 games. Because <laughs> the first game, I guess they weren't entirely sure what they were doing. Maybe that was made before they had, like, the ERSB. I don't know. I don't really play a lot of scary games or really games in general, I guess. So. I've been looking into some. I was going to play Slender soon. Oh, yeah? And uh, <laughs> SCP-87. What's that? Which is... It's like an indie game where it's, I guess it's based on this kind of wiki site of these fake like monsters and legends and stuff. Yeah. And you're just going down this dimly lit staircase for a random period of time and you just kind of see stuff out of the corner of your eye and basically you just wait for some kind of demon to kill you. And that's the whole game. Sounds pretty dumb. <laughs> It apparently just, like, kind of plays on your own paranoia because you never know when it's going to come. I don't know, but that's the thing. is like when I'm playing a game where this is the idea, it's like, oh, no. When could it come in this video game that I'm playing? It's kind of like, uh, okay, I hate the movie Paranormal Activity. I was forced to watch it. And, like, my friends who were with me were like, oh, man, that was so scary. And I'm like, dude, the entire movie was suspense. Like, to be sitting here yeah. waiting for something to happen for two hours, I kind of don't really care by the time that, oh, look, the movie's about to end. Really? Did it really happen now? <laughs> oh, no, I wasn't expecting that for the entire movie. See, at least this game's only five minutes or so, five to ten. That'll make you do it for, like, a 40-hour game. <laughs> I, I, I I tried playing Slender, but um, whatever scary elements are in that game uh, didn't really work that well for me. Were you playing um, it, like... Out in the backyard, like on your laptop, <laughs> just no. I, I mean, I, I I did it right. I I had the lights turned off. It was nighttime. Yeah. It was just me by myself. But um, I think the problem was I'm I'm I guess I'm really bad at slender because I spent the entire game just kind of wandering around the forest, not finding a single thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I and my understanding is that um, the 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 slender man um, uh, approaches you more frequently after you have uh, found the notes that you're supposed to be collecting throughout the game, and I only ever found two notes before I got just so completely bored with it. Yeah. So I, I, I don't think I ever unlocked the scary parts, yeah. as it were. I've been kind of skeptical about that game because I don't think it looks scary, but so many people are saying, oh, God, it's so scary. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's what I heard, too. I heard it was the you know the scariest thing ever, but um, I don't know. I guess if I had been better at finding things, it would have worked better for me. So, number four, do you think... Well, well I, I have a comment. I have a comment to make. Um, just piggybacking one on what um jetty said earlier it's i think um that's a problem with video games and or movies if the type of scariness um what i'm saying doesn't make sense but i mean if it's like a jump out at you like something appears suddenly and that's scary 
whenever you rewatch the movie <laughs> and you know it's coming, all of a sudden it's not scary anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, I have a, that, I have one cheap. <laughs> quick more. Uh, Phantasmagoria, what we were talking about earlier, uh, it has this song that plays throughout the game during these scenes where you're seeing horrific things happening to people uh, in the past, like people uh, getting strangled by flower pots, getting you know, <laughs> horrible things stabbed into their eye, stuff like that. Is it, There's this one song that plays during each of these scenes. Turkey in the Straw? Yes. <laughs> So, so the in the in the final chapter, um, you're you're uh, trying to you're in the final chapter, you're you know fighting your what is essentially a boss fight, and then that music starts playing, and it's not an inherently scary song, but since my brain had associated with all these horrifying moments from earlier in the game, it really like it really knocked me out for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> It was it was quite horrifying. Interesting. Because I was like, oh god, now now something like that's gonna happen to me, hmm. unless I solve these clever puzzles really quickly. Interesting. I like it. I like the the Pavlovian yeah. aspect to it. Yeah, it's kind of cool. That's exactly what was going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, were you the seventh guest? In the seventh guest, you play as the seventh guest, who is uh. Do I want to get spoilers? Does anybody seven. care for spoilers? I don't care. Okay. Um. He's a little kid. The little kid who wanders into the mansion and gets killed by the bad guy. Oh. So it's like, wait a minute, that was me 30 years ago. I was that kid. Dun, dun, oh, dun. Oh, no. It's a huge plot twist. And so you save the life of yourself when you save the little kid. Interesting. Now I think about it, it's the stupidest plot twist ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the little kid really should not have been in the game. It's freaky. Yeah. Number four. Uh, do you think the Wii U will be a success, all jokes aside? I really hope so, because I've already pre-ordered mine. <laughs> Uh, so I, I, I it, hope there are games for it. Is it actually a console, or is it just like an extension of the existing it's, Wii? I mean, it's it's not like a, a Kinect accessory. It's a brand new console that. It's own console. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's as powerful as the Xbox 360 and the PS3. Weird. Um, I don't know. I, I'm I'm rooting for it. Uh, not because I'm not even really that interested in the in the iPad controller. Um, I just Wait, want more an new iPad super- controller. It, essentially, it has a tablet for a controller. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a, oh, I thought you meant they were making a controller for the iPad. I'm like, <laughs> no. oh, that would be so awesome. No, but, no, 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 no. You're talking about the, the iPad Wii U. is a controller. No, I just I want more new Super Mario Brothers games that are multiplayer. Oh. Actually, okay, yeah. uh, this leads into number five. Oh. Uh, which which new Wii U games interest you most? So we we can uh, combine those two. It would it would, it would be that one. Uh, I mean, New Super Mario Brothers Wii, uh, the, the really the co-op at the same time aspect, really like it was one of the best games I had played in a very very long time. I just had a, a total blast playing with my wife, playing with my friends, playing it with anyone I could shove a controller in front of. So I'm really looking forward to experiencing that again with all new levels and, and you know whatever drawing stuff on the iPad, whatever they have you doing with that. Um, so I'm, and I'm also looking forward to Tank 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 because of that wonderful wonderful name. I haven't seen anything. That really strikes me about it at this time. Everything it everything it has, it just seems to bog down games that were already fun with just needless tech demo. But crap. you can shoot zombies and look at a second screen while you're doing it. Oh, thank God for that. Well, you know, when the DS came out, I'm like, do I really need a second screen? And now it's like second nature to have a game yeah. with two screens. So I'm not immediately going to discount a second screen. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that's how I'm approaching the Wii. I mean, there, there are tons of people out there saying it's going to be... And by the way, I'm very excited for Pikmin because I love Mr. Pikmin. But, uh, you know, I've, I've been against Nintendo when uh, with the DS. I thought it was the worst thing I ever heard of. In the Wii, when I heard about the Wii, I thought it was pretty dumb. And, I mean, I... They've proved me wrong before, so really it's just like, okay, it's, uh, they've earned the benefit of the doubt, and it's... Did they prove you wrong with the Wii? <laughs> yeah. Well, because it prints money. That's what the Wii did. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the, Wii, the, the Wii itself is kind of what makes me wary about the Wii U's, because I was one of the people who thought that having the TV remote controller was the coolest thing in the world, and I can't wait to see all the great motion control stuff they do with it. And then they didn't really do anything with it for, like, oh, eight I years. Mean, they, they did enough to capture the market, and then... Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not saying... Like, they certainly did enough for, for the casual fans. Everyone really liked their Wii Bowling and whatnot. But 
they didn't do a whole lot that appealed to me personally with that. Like the thing, the games that I like the most on the Wii U are games that kind of eschew its control scheme. Paul, and I say this with all due respect, if people make games just for you, they go broke in a week. <laughs> I cannot disagree with that. <laughs> but no, I, I, I understand what you're saying, and, and you know it's it is certainly a fair criticism that they've ignored, you know, other you know the more old school or the the hardcore set. But you know they. They are still making games that I love to play, uh, and they've, you know, they they've managed to do so in a pretty hostile uh, climate for them now. Well, yeah. for for any type of luxury entertainment, especially considering the the advent of the you know iPad, and more mobile gaming, and they they've done it well. And, you know, they they they're poised to. So I think they're poised to, to over to, to keep their lead over Sony and Microsoft because they Nintendo does what it, Nintendo got in early when the development of the technology was cheap and kind of you know started to shift into another area and, and shift slightly back towards more hard you know old school gamers. Now that you know people have kind of the the the, the gimmick has kind of worn off. Whereas Sony and Microsoft, well, Sony's got their move, which. They basically put out, and I don't feel like they did anything with. Well, they, they have the, the Wonder Pardon? Book is coming out, and that's going to take the world by storm, I think. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> it's, it's really Most okay. Most people don't. don't. <laughs> in, in another six months, Sony won't either. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, in, in Microsoft is like seems intent on dumping stuff into the Kinect, which is cool, but just I don't really know anyone that's like, oh, yeah, Kinect. You know, that's, that's what I'm going home and doing every day. You, you know one person. Is it you, Paul? It is me. I I really, really enjoy my Kinect, actually. I have, oh, I have sure. an Xbox game use Kinect? It does not. Yeah, Kinect is an enabler. Exactly. For games. <laughs> no, I've, I've, I've played enough Kinect games that uh, that have, you know, I, I, I actually really like the aspect of getting up and moving around while I'm playing a video game and feeling like I'm a little more active. It, it makes gaming feel more productive to me. It makes you feel like you're not such a lazy slob. Yeah, it does. Like, after I, you know, play a round of Diabolical Pitch, I feel like I had a fun time, and I got a good workout out of it, too. Yeah. I'm comfortable with my lazy slobbiness. <laughs> I just switched to iPad, and I'm not looking back. But I don't know. Um, with the Wii, I was super looking forward to it, and I, I felt kind of let down by it. Um, so I, I, I have much lower expectations for the Wii U, except for New Super Mario Bros. Wii U, which is why I'm getting the stupid thing. I think the Wii U is fine. I think I'll wait maybe like a year or two. Yeah, I'll probably wait half a year. Yeah. I mean, well, I just don't have the money. Yeah, yeah, I know but... that I'll get it eventually. Probably I will eventually get it, but, you know, not right now. Wait till they bundle a better game with it, too. Right now, you have They've to got pay nothing. 50... Yeah. Well, if you pay $50 extra, you can get the bundle with Nintendo Land. Which, you know, kind of defeats the purpose of having a cheap pack-in. You defeat the purpose of having a cheap pack-in. <laughs> Paul bought the cheap version, and he feels upset because everybody likes the expensive version. <laughs> I, I am. People People are acting like I was listening to this podcast where, like, 20 minutes of the podcast was devoted to how dumb you'd have to be to get the cheaper version. But I, I don't understand why. I don't want <laughs> Nintendo Land. I'd, I'd rather spend 10 bucks on the extra storage space instead of 50 bucks. Like, But don't you, don't they have, like, a, what's the differences between the two versions? Doesn't one come with, like, a power cord and the other doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> I think it has a power cord. It could be a mistake. I hope it does. Wasn't well, that what happened with the PlayStation 3? It didn't come with the HD thing? I, yeah, I think that's right. I had, no, but again, like that's a situation it's... where if, if that's the big difference, like an HDMI cards are, or cords are not very expensive, so I'll get They're the cheaper $400 one. dollars at Best Buy. <laughs> I mm. think mine was less than $5. Yeah, yeah, I no, I bought a bunch of HDMI cables the other day for Magfest. I got twenty of them for thirty two dollars. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, yes, I used a coupon on Newegg, but and there was a slight there was a price break, but uh yeah, no. Anyone who pays more than two dollars for an HDMI cable is wasting more money. Mm, do, 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 do. I'm just trying to look up the information between the two different Wii's. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's it. I think the differences are uh, one. The expensive one has Nintendo Land. It has a bigger hard drive, uh, and it comes with some sort of discount program where you get 10% back. But 
paying extra for that just feels like you know paying extra for a discount card at GameStop. It, uh, I'm never okay, going to use the it enough thing. for, it's to a, for itself. It's a gamepad charging cradle. So does that mean that you're going to have batteries with your like little iPad controller? No, I think I think the uh, I think it still comes with the plug to plug it in. It just doesn't have a little stand. But to charge it up, then. Oh, okay. That's what you're thinking. I, I mean, I think so. I could be wrong. I like the 3DS had a has a cradle too, but I never actually use it. It does. Wow, mine didn't. I, I think mine came with one. I don't know. I, I, think... I left it in the box. I mean, the, oh. the original 3DS came with a cradle, but the 3DS XL. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I have a 3D XL, and I actually made it really like it. Yeah, you're right. Apparently, the only difference is they've got the cradle, a stand for the gamepad, which is different from the cradle, the stand <laughs> for the console, yeah. and then like twice as much memory. Yeah. So I, I, th- I think I was just a little offended that people were just assuming that you would want to pay fifty dollars to get all this stuff that you don't really need. Have you met Americans? <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. But it, it worked out great for me because uh, when I actually went to pre-order it, uh, both models were sold out everywhere except the GameStop, which only had the cheaper model left. Yeah, I, I'm just going to wait six months. I don't feel like, again, not not in my budget, and I, I'll just do it then. I, I think that's very reasonable. I was going to say, if I pay attention to various deals, like, I'll probably be able to find, you know, something for 50 bucks off. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can probably also find a bundle with a game you're more interested in, too, at that point. Yeah, yeah. That's that's pretty. That's how I do my shopping. So. I just want, really want new Mario. I don't know if I've emphasized this yet. You still haven't tried Mario 3DS. That's a completely different thing. I don't want anything to do with that. There's new Super Mario Brothers for. Oh, you want new Super Mario Brothers, the multiplayer version? Yeah, I mean it's the multiplayer that makes the game. I think uh, people okay, who were okay. disappointed with uh, the Wii version were only so because they didn't play co-op. I like, did, if, and I still was. Uh, you yeah, weren't happy words. with generic Mario game number 16? <laughs> How could you not love it? I think it would have been so much better for me if player one and player two didn't touch. <laughs> no, that's what's fun. I love picking up people and throwing them around. Well, that part would be fine to me. It's just that when we're both jumping over a pit <laughs> and I jump into the bottom of their uh, feet. <laughs> yeah, I just I, ha- I, I enjoy the chaos. I don't know. And since I, the game's relatively easy, you always almost, have enough lives that it doesn't become a huge issue. I have a couple friends that almost broke up over that game. Because of the <laughs> My wife and I played it, and we stopped after one time. <laughs> oh. Our marriage isn't strong enough for this. Well, my wife and I beat it, and then we played it again to get all the big coins. So are you guys right. done talking about that topic yet? Because we have one, no, we have I've one got more email. One more thing. One more uh-huh. thing. This is more recent news. Apparently... The gamepad, the Nintendo's not selling extra controllers for the Wii U. Well, apparently all the launch games don't support another one. So I oh, guess that's so fine. then what's the point of having two controllers? Yeah. I, I mean, the only reason you would want it is if you if you break both the one you have, I guess. Well, weird. Then why do they have the system support two controllers when none of the games support two controllers? Well, they um, anticipate they will in the future, but right now, I guess the, all the launch ones don't. Well, and so if you then, break your controller, oh, you're up shit's creek. Yeah. Okay, so I guess I guess I was going to ask, how is that going to work with new Super Mario Brothers Wii U? But I guess well, you could just use a Nintendo Wii controller. Yeah, and that's it. Um, all, I think all the games that support multiplayer at launch, they, they support one Wii pad and then multiple Wii remotes from the Wii that you probably already have, which is quite handy. All right, next, okay. next topic. <laughs> okay, we have one more. Question. Hello, I have questions. What do you think about the Wii U? Do you think it will hey. be worth the money to get it? <laughs> should, we read these, should we read these emails at the beginning of the podcast so we can have topics? <laughs> no, didn't, didn't someone yell at us when we just made the entire podcast reader mail? That was me and Jetty. That was like a two-part episode, wasn't it? That's true. <laughs> I don't know, like, oh. I, I almost want to say, like, we have the Game Cola uh, podcast topic pile, mm-hmm. like, but we don't really have enough time to discuss the topics when we also read the fan emails, because yeah. the fans send us... I mean, p- part of me wants to say that if we can do a podcast where we're just talking about the subjects that people ask us to talk about, I feel like that wouldn't be a terrible thing. Yeah. I feel like we've but, probably uh, done it right. 
I think podcasts usually balance it with, say, they bring two topics and then they have, like, say, two emails and they talk about the topics in the emails in addition. Yeah. But, like, the thing is, is, I don't know, I mean, we get so many emails, I don't want to, like, ignore the emails that we get from our fans. Yeah, and we've already complained, like, about the Ace Attorney um, emails being ridiculously late and behind the times. Oh, wow. Why don't why don't we uh why don't we put it out to the listeners? Do you guys want us to do podcasts whoa, where we're whoa, just essentially oh, Paul, send no. us email if you want us to. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, but really, I mean, if if the, if the people want us to talk more just about the things that they tell us to talk about, uh, we can we can certainly make that the focus and only go to the topic pile when we don't have uh, well, anything from the listeners. I, I I think last time we sort of covered some of the topics that were on the topic pile. Should we perhaps go back over those a bit? Uh, achievements, what makes the game genuinely scary, how much backwards compatibility should a system have. Uh, Who is your daddy and what does he do? Yeah, uh, who's the black private dick who's the sex machine to all the chicks? Paul Franzen! How much, <laughs> how much rock hey, could Chuck Rock Chuck if Chuck Rock could Chuck Rock? Uh, That's a good one, actually. <laughs> pick three to five characters from any game, who's your RPG dream team? Oh, I like that one. What videos would you like to see people make for the Game Cola YouTube channel? I mean, there are some good topics on here, uh, but also That's true. a lot of the fan topics that we get are pretty good. I mean, look at how long we've been talking about those. Yeah. This last one's kind of a repeat of what we just said. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess there's some condensing to be done, but I don't know. I, I feel bad. Like, so many of these are from people who are Game Cola super fans. You know, they email yeah. us every month. Well, see, I, I just I don't I don't know how like it, I think it really depends on how the reader mail section comes across to people. Like, does it just seem like something you should be doing in the last ten minutes after doing a full podcast already, or is it something that people would want to be the primary focus of the podcast? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that because if it's just like if people just think it should be the last ten minutes or whatever, like a, a kind of wrapping up. Okay. Us emails. <laughs> No, I mean, if people think it should be more of a wrapping up segment, um, then I guess we're we're doing it wrong. But that's not the question and answer podcast. I I imagine there has to be some podcast where the focus is people sending in questions. Yeah, mm. That we would do two this podcasts. Is the only podcast I listen to, so yeah, we do. I mean, what if you just do it like MST3K, where you you know you you do your funny shtick, and then at the end there's you know they read a letter and. They do some funny shtick based on the letter. That's the thing, though. If we if we do uh, make that section uh, not so much a primary focus as just the, like the last thing we do, then we're not going to have time to. We we'd have to just pick the best letter. And, and I, I mean, I guess there's no reason we can't do that. Just we'd be leaving out a lot of people. Yeah, and I mean, uh, like again, some of these emails are relatively lengthy and give a lot of reasonably good uh, topics. Yeah. I feel I feel uh, poor Rizaman kind of got the short shrift there because we just kind of gave one word answers to all of his questions. Yeah. Stuff like that. I don't know. Unless he was the person who asked about the Wii U and we talked about that for a half hour. Uh, he did ask about the Wii U, but then so okay. did uh, Anna. <laughs> oh, never mind. Which is the one that uh, I was like, we have one more email. So I I I don't I I it just I think it depends on what the fans want out of the podcast. So fans, tell us what you think. Send us an email. Podcast at gamecola dot net. Speaking of which, uh, what other ways? Make a podcast about answering your yeah. emails about the podcast. <laughs> Be so meta that the site will fold in on itself and yeah. cease to exist. It's Inception, but like with podcasts and emails. Is it, is it time? Do you want me to do the rest of the uh, housekeeping yeah, real quick? Is, they, yeah. Uh, do we like what? What? Why do we do this podcast? Is, like, is there some reason like why this podcast is around some uh, site on the web? Uh, yes, we have an actual internet website, GameCola.net, if you're just listening on YouTube or on iTunes. Also, go to the website. There's lots of great stuff there. Uh, you can follow us at Twitter. We're at GameCola. We're also on Facebook. Become a fan of this there. Just search for GameCola. If you follow either of those, you'll get a regular update on your Facebook or Twitter whenever we post a new article, podcast, video, whatever. Uh, so that's kind of handy. Uh, you check us out on YouTube. We're uh, GC.net. The letter's GC. The words dot and net. <laughs> um. Yes, the word dot. Oh, you're going to laugh every time I do that. The now, word dot you? and the word net. <laughs> well, I, what am I supposed to do? The letters GC yes. and then dot net? Like, uh. Yeah, because, I mean, it is the word I, dot. I can't just say the word dot and then net. net. Yeah, the, the flow is all wrong, you know? Yes. The word dot anyway, net. Um, if you're not uh, checking us out on iTunes, do that. Subscribe, rate us, rate us high, don't rate us low. If you don't like us, we don't have an iTunes thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as Jetty said, you can email us, podcastgamecola.net. And uh, 
apparently we don't do this anymore. We keep saying we will, but um, if you want us to call you live on the podcast, uh, send your Skype username or actual phone number to the, the address I just gave you, and maybe we'll do it someday. Hopefully. Maybe I can bring in some of my special guests from my contact list. Like, I mean, maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe we just need to have, like, every few months, like, a catch-up, like, this is dedicated to the fans, This like, a, a, yeah. a second podcast of the month, only for fan okay. stuff. I don't know. I mean, that that, that could work. Uh, would you be okay doing multiple podcasts every now and then? Uh, every now and then. I mean, not every month. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Uh, that might be good to do it. Yeah, and then we can have a, a podcast where we catch up on emails that we didn't get a chance to, and also call some people. So I don't know. Uh, that could die. Yeah. I mean, fans, tell us what you think. <laughs> I'm sorry to keep uh, going back to this, but the idea of just using the topic file seems weird to me because it's like we're we're coming up with arbitrary topics for the topic pile, so we have something to talk about. Whereas we have all these people emailing us saying, please talk about this, please talk about this. Oh, yeah, let's use that. True. I don't know. I mean, again, uh, some people amongst the Game Cola staff, previously their problem with it was that it, we were reading, like, YouTube comments and stuff. That's true. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, let, let's use a little discretion here. Um, <laughs> well, we haven't read YouTube comments in months. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean that was also so we, should, we probably yeah. shouldn't be reading any comments from, you know... God Hitler ninety nine. Uh, <laughs> uh, but um, you yeah, know, I mean, we stopped doing that once we started getting actual letters. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if people are people are writing in, let's 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 like, well, have them pick our topic. Let's have them, you know, let's talk about those topics. And let's face it, we're gonna turn it around to Phoenix Wright or something that we want to talk about yeah. anyway. W- yeah, we're gonna talk about um, in, uh, Are you afraid of the yeah. dark? <laughs> Doug? Yeah, I mean, no. yeah. I, did, I, I turned it around to New Vegas. Yeah. And all the <laughs> listeners are really doing are just providing us with our segue. Yeah. A, uh, a friend of mine... Yeah, this picked up a really good point about New Vegas that I'd like to make. <laughs> A friend of mine. I guess that is true, though. It would uh, limit our abilities to talk about the things we actually want to talk about. Hmm. In real life, was asking me what the podcast was about because I mentioned that like I'm busy tonight because I'm going to be on this podcast. And they're like, oh, well, what, what is your podcast about? I was like, well, it's supposed to be about video games, but mostly we kind of talk <laughs> about Doug and like. So like, okay, we've been doing this podcast for about two hours now. <laughs> Should we wrap this up? Oh, probably. I have a feeling the Nickelodeon discussion isn't going to make the cut. Sadly, well, okay, off-topic podcast. I'm finally going yeah. to do it. That's, you've been saying that for a while, though. Yeah, one of these days. So anyway, uh, I think this podcast is about over. Thank you, everyone, for listening, uh, and thank you, everyone, for showing up for this podcast, as opposed to the last time where no one except for Paul showed up. <laughs> I had a farewell party to go to. Mm-hmm. I had a mm-hmm. I just don't like Paul. Sister. I'll never see her again. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well. Oh. Your long-lost sister. Mm-hmm. Michelle Gray. <laughs> really? Or? No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh... Boy, would that have been insulting. <laughs> anyway, uh, again, thank you, everyone. Uh, so goodbye, everybody. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Toodles. Bye. As such, we are, you know, constantly trying to figure out. I thought I silenced you, you son of a bitch.